insights about today's event? Okay, madam, it was a very uh, inspirational event. Myself and McMahon we were actually pondering about uh, things going on within our community as Edo women as, and as Nigerians. Yes. Okay, so I will count in my language. When you hear Ela, we all will read. So, Opa Eva Ela. Go. Once upon a time in Africa, we paid no taxes. There was no crime. There was no police. There was no inflation. There was no unemployment. There was no AIDS. There was no poverty. There was no famine. There was no corruption. There was no death crisis. There was no prostitution. Men didn't beat or divorce their wives. Then the white man came to improve things. Shobuge, the daughter of Yesomi, who is the daughter of Titi Ekme, who is the daughter of Agbaoe, that is the daughter of Adegbiyoge, who is the daughter of Ikaga. It is on the shoulders of these great women that I stand here today, and I honor them. I ask for the permission of my elders in this room to speak. You can just say to me, speak. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. I am an African indigenous educator and storyteller for children. And um, my interest is in learning our African indigenous knowledge systems, living and practicing our African indigenous cultures as a way to decolonize and re-Africanize ourselves. Hence, I am understanding my presentation today and presenting to you through the lens of our African indigeneity. So, um, do bear with me because some of the things I will be saying, I'll be referring to, to my notes as well. Okay. I put a warning, and the warning is with regards to truth and learning in discomfort. What I'll be talking about, I do, I do invite you to please be of an open ear, to listen, open mind. Do not prejudge this because it's about us, but it may not be in the conventional way we used to. And if you're uncomfortable about it, that is okay, because really, in truth, um, learning happens in discomfort. All right, so that's my disclaimer right there. Now I'm going to ask, and be honest, there is no judgment about this. Does our past matter? Do you think that our past matters? Yes. 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 Okay, for those who say yes, please kindly raise up your hands. Okay, thank you. For those who say no, please kindly raise up your hands. Nobody say no. There's just a whole lot of maybes. Okay, okay for, for those who say maybe. For those who say maybe. 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 Oh, thank you so much for that honesty. All right, so, so, let's, so let's see. Let's analyze the answers. For those who say no, let's see. Ah, nobody say no, so I will go through this fast. Thank you. So um, I will skip this then because we don't have anyone who say no. But just in case you are on maybe and you, and you say, okay, maybe it matters or not, this is what I will say to you. To claim that one can forget the past and still meaningfully understand the present or determine the future is the same as saying all learning experiences an adult gained while growing up are unimportant and can be discarded without consequences. Do we understand that? Mm -hmm. Now. I will go to the other terrain of my thought is the concept of Iyan. I want to encourage us, please, do not confuse your culture and the power of your culture for witchcraft. Mm. They are completely Ashe, two Ashe, different Ashe, things. Ashe, 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 I will Ashe, tell Ashe, you Ashe, something. Ashe, Ashe. There was a time. How did we become free from mm. our enslavement? They tell you the lies that will encourage the destruction of our people. You and I will not be here if Mama Nani, they said she could even catch bullets by her hand. Ah, well, you would hear that story. 
Nana Abena Raminta, which we call Aria Topman, how could she do the work that she did? The same one when she walks, you you won't see her. She walked invisibly. Mm. But now when okay. I tell you, you say, eh, hey, hey, it's witchcraft, or yet, when we go through doors, as we approach doors, door open, we say it's science. <laughs> and we want to talk to someone in another place. We carry phone, we talk, we say it's science. But when your but when your 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 grandparents or great great ancestors they said, if you want to talk with me, speak to the wind. Mm. 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 Yes. They come and teach us and say it is witchcraft. Mm -hmm. I will tell you something, within African indigenous context, science is spirituality that is seen and produces the same result. Spirituality is science that is not seen, yet produces the same result. And if you argue with me, go and call Baba Thunder or Baba Rain, let him bring down rain down. <laughs> we all know these stories. We all have these stories. But in order to disempower us, only then should we be the strong. Do not use your power. When you practice that which gives you power, come talk to me. Because you have to understand, you have to understand that even within our context, once a year they have we have spiritual cleansing for those who use the power for harm to do against others. We do have that, but what happened is they've taken your power, they've learned everything from you and use it against you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we will go on. To run for public office, or you just want to be involved in the community and community engagement, do it. We need people with different perspectives, we need brave people, we need people from diverse backgrounds to speak. When no one speaks, there's nothing to be heard. I can, thankfully, I, I can say that, you know, when it comes to my city portfolio, it started off by me being very scared about how people would receive me, mm -hmm. to me being acknowledged um, places like CBC as uh, 150 women, as they celebrated 150 years of you know, Canada's you know, um, anniversary. I was acknowledged as um, 150 Canadian women in politics that you should look out for, that are making history. And to me, that was such an honor because you know, I know there's a lot of young women, a lot of people who in Canada, I'm not downgrading them, who are doing amazing jobs. But when you talk about the African community, if I have to be very realistic and straightforward with everybody, they're not all Africans doing anything politically. You know what I mean? And representation matters. Mm -hmm. But then I really want to go and dive, and, and go uh, with the little time I have, divert into a different subject. I want to talk about where we're from and Africa. I want to. I don't want to talk about Canada too much. We're already in Canada, paying taxes, working, doing all these things. Canada, Canada will be fine. There's a lot of Canadians. I have a problem though. I have a problem with our people. Our people are not investing in our home. When I went to Nigeria in 2013, and I was in Benin, there were, even though there are a lot of people abroad, so many people have been in Canada for years, there were many people in Benin. People were working, you know what I mean? The economy was different, the government was doing, but people were still in the States. I went to Benin, what year was it? People are gone, you know what I mean? Everyone is either migrating to Lagos, Abuja, or out of town in the diaspora. How do you expect Nigeria to be a country where we can come back home and live and be very comfortable? I mean, does everybody want to retire here? Because I don't, and I'm not even born here. You know what I mean? There's beauty in our culture, beauty in our home, in the food that we eat, in the language that we speak, in the way that you know we, we live our lives. Everything there is simple and beautiful. So I'm gonna, I'm, I don't want to talk too much, but I really wanted to amplify the fact that I think that we should all, in one way or the other, invest in our background, invest in our home. For me, that would be East and West Africa. Invest in our home, whether it means you're building, you're working towards building a home, working towards starting a business, creating a nonprofit, giving back to people. In any way you can, invest in Africa, because Africa does not need the people who run away just for a better life. But I do plan to involve myself more in Nigerian politics because we need leaders that will stand up against all odds and convictions and say, we can do this. And it starts off with all of us being community leaders, investing in our children, changing the mindsets of our children, encouraging them to go back home. My parents did me such an honor. Thank you. They did me such an honor by sending me back home. My mom and my dad agreed to send me to Nigeria for like almost two years. <laughs> so I lived in Nigeria for almost two years, and at first I was like, oh my goodness, I'm going to Nigeria. And I loved it. It was so much fun. But then after a while, I was like, I need to come back. But when I came back, honestly, it changed my perspective. I had a different uh, standard for how I wanted to live my life. I expected more. I wanted more, you know? 
And at the end of the day now, years, years down the line, after that experience, I can say to God be the glory, my perspective is different. I want the best for Canada, but I want even better for my countries back home. Our countries back home deserve better. They deserve people to say, to stand up, no matter how scary something is, and be brave. Because if we continue the pattern that many have left us with, leaving Nigeria being afraid, I'm telling you, if there's, Nigeria's gonna, I'm, I'm, I know there's other people from, out of Nigeria. I'm sorry to be mentioning Nigeria, but Nigeria is a perfect example. If we leave Nigeria how it is right now, we leave our nations how it is right now, do never, don't ever think that in 20 years, 15 years from now, it'll be better than what it is. It'll be Absolutely. worse. Yes. It'll end up like Syria, a country that is basically damaged, there's nothing left to show for it, or it'll end up with everybody in extreme poverty. You will not even want to go and visit Nigeria. So what are we waiting for? Why aren't we working? Is it fear? Eliminate fear. On the other side of fear is success. On the other side of fear are history makers. There's a saying that I love to say anywhere I go. History makers don't wait for things to happen. They make things happen. So I encourage all of us to get back home, invest in the people, encourage women, especially women in politics, encourage them in community building, encourage your sons and daughters, and tell them that there's more to life than just what we see here in the diaspora, yes. because there really is. Yeah. And when you get to learn more about yourself, you think different about yourself. I'm a queen, and I know that, you know? My ancestors, they're, ah, God bless their souls. They fought such a huge and amazing, generous fight. And I dare not, this day and age, know what I know, like what she's taught us, know what I know, turn my back on my ancestors and my people and say I'm living a better and comfortable life only in Canada. Representation matters and nobody can represent you or your country better than you represent your own self. Thank you. Oh, that is so in the literature, there is that cultural stigma against any mental illness in our community. So if you have, if you're experiencing mental illness in our community, it's more like a taboo. Nobody talks about it. It's a family secret. We don't want to share it. And also, in, in the literature, there is that syndrome of a superwoman syndrome and also a strong black woman syndrome. So that when all when the woman, uh, all women are increased risk of uh, postpartum depression, but when a black woman is experiencing postpartum depression, because of all this pressure, they cannot hide it. The cancer of the breast, so not to go into details, Cancer of the breast, the way we screen for breast cancer is mammogram. Mammogram is really an ultrasound specialized imaging of your breast. And it's for women that are 50 years or older. And it's done every two years if your previous one was known. But for those women who are considered to be a high risk, high risk meaning you have an aunt that has breast cancer, you have a mother that has breast cancer, then you consider high risk, you can do start it sooner, as from age 40. And also, your healthcare practitioner can refer you to Mount Sinai for special high-risk breast cancer counseling. So where they do a specialized test to check for the gene, the breast cancer causing gene, to see if you're a carrier. So if you're a carrier, then they will not advise you as to the next step. So the famous, uh, public person that did this special high-risk uh, cancer screening was, uh, anybody know? Angelina. Angelina Julie. So Angelina Julie, as you know, her mom had breast cancer. So she was kind of it's a special uh, high-risk group. She had to, went through that counseling and had a test done, and it shows that she's carrying the breast cancer gene. So she just went, opted for proactive and remove her, her breasts ovaries just to make sure that she doesn't get it. <laughs> it's the woman that will give you the stress. Yeah. Yeah. Five minutes I love you. Another five minutes I hate you. <laughs> five minutes I love you again. Another five minutes I think I'm right, I hate you. <laughs> you see? I don't want to go back home. But then you don't want to stop going home. <laughs> Have you ever experienced anybody here? Yeah. I'm driving home, but I'm, I, well, let me just go and hang out with my friends. Yes. Mama is home, let me go and see what she's doing. <laughs> you see? I don't want to go home, but I cannot stop going home. That's right. That's right. That's companionship. So what is mental health? If I were to ask people here to 
tell me what the thing is mental health by just listening to that hearing that what comes to your mind what is mental health depression yes depression okay Mental health is anything that affects our feeling at a particular time. Okay, anything yeah, that affects, anything that affects the way we react, the way we uh, do things. Uh -huh. Some people may be hidden, maybe they have to keep to themselves, not going out. At the time, there's something happening around them, so that's mental health. Okay, any other idea? Yes. Yes. It's uh, your ability to, it affects how you function on a daily basis. So it's everything that happens inside of your mind and affects your behavior towards other people and in your own life. Okay. That's great. I asked that question. Yes, please. Yeah, I would say um, anything that's um, affect, um, taking us away from how we were originally created. Uh -huh. um, um, our thoughts, our mental thoughts are created in such and such a way that Anything that's um, formally taking us away from how that, how we were created, um, is a form of destruction to our thoughts process. Yeah. Okay. Strategically, I ask that for you because the word mental health is something that we, especially the immigrants, are not comfortable to say. To so even mention it's like a taboo. Mental health. I don't know what And I want us to be comfortable to talk about the word mental health. And I bet you that was my expectation that when each time when I ask the question what is mental health, even in my circular work, people come up with different ideas, and that's great. We're having conversation about it, that. And we've seen that today, depression and whatever can help us, you know, to identify who we are or how we can cope. So mental health, is mental health a positive thing or a negative thing? It can be both. Both and negative. I like this, we're doing this presentation together. It's not a negative Okay. I want you, if there's anything when you live here today, when you hear mental health, don't automatically go to the oh, default person that is a negative. Yeah. Mental health is a positive thing. It's a capacity when you see the definition. Uh, it's a capacity to feel, think, and act in ways that enhance our ability to enjoy life. Is there anyone here that doesn't want ability to enjoy life? No. no, that's what we want. We want ability to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. So we want to have mental health. Mental health is a positive thing. It's a great phenomenon. It's something we want. Mental health is everyone's business. It's all of our business. Mental health is a public health issue and it's everyone's business. It's a fundamental human right. We all deserve to have public, uh, mental health mm -hmm. because it's a positive thing, right? Mental health and well-being of individuals, they are shaped by many intersecting dimensions of our lives. The quick environmental scan talked about some of us are teachers, professionals, we work full time, we have parents, we remember friends and families back home. Those are intersecting. Some are men, some are married, some are female. We have a lot of intersecting, pulling factors that can impact that mental health if it's not well managed. Can I move on? So then, what is mental illness? I'm going to ask you another question. Any thoughts? What comes to mind? Thanks to my colleague that talked a lot about depression, so I'm not going to go. This presentation is all about mental illness. Mental illness, as earlier stated, is a medically diagnosable illness. It has to be diagnosed by a doctor, a nurse practitioner, someone that is professionally designed to do that. So look, think about it when you see people and you automatically label them. We're going to talk a little bit about Stigma. I'm, sure, I'm sorry, I like to walk around when I'm doing presentation, but I'm mindful I don't want to block you. Please let me know if I'm doing that. Okay. So, think about it when you see somebody and you automatically assume that they are going to, they're having challenges, you know, mentally. It has to be diagnosed by somebody. And what does it, how do you know? And how does it affect you? It affects people's mood and thinking and their behavior. 
guys, you know, once somebody has been diagnosed with osteoporosis, you know, just like what has been said earlier on, you have exercise, you have medication, and you have diet. Can anyone tell me why exercise is number one? That means the top. Why exercise? Is, 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 yeah? Yeah, I think, I think exercise is going to help you um, for your bones because um, that disease, it decreases um, the strength of your bones because after the age of around like 30, um, you start, your bones start kind of decreasing because um, before the age of 30, um, your bones usually grow and grow because you're getting bigger and stronger and stuff. But when you're over the age of 30, that's when it stops doing it and it might start decreasing. So you should still always stay active. Thank you very much. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Good, good, Perfect. Good. Thank you so much. I think in life, we're always going after the how, right? If I want to grow my business, how do I do it? If I want to improve my health, how do I do it? How, how, how? We get so fixated on the how, but we don't look at the inner chain, the person I have to become, right? So as you listen to all the speakers today, you'll be inspired, you'll be educated, you'll be moved. But I want you to really think, what are some things I can change on the inside? Because once you do the inner change, then your outer world will change. So look at somebody who wants to go on a diet, right? Somebody wants to go on a diet, they say, I want to lose weight, I'm tired of people looking at me funny or people making fun of me, and all of a sudden, I want to go on a diet, that's it, I want to lose weight. And they go on a diet and what happens, you know? They join a gym. They may not go to the gym, they join it. And they say, you know, that's it, I don't know, nothing white, no chocolate, no sugar, anything. And then what happens? They start to lose weight. Why? Because, first of all, they're starving themselves, but they believe that it's those foods that make them fat. Really, it's not, it's not the foods that make you fat, it's your self-image that makes you fat. Okay? So if somebody decides to go on a diet without changing their self-image, any weight loss will be temporary. Yeah. And all of a sudden, what happens, you know? You just put the weight back on. Yeah. It's like magic. <laughs> okay. My name is Lucy Ruth. Um, i originally from Zimbabwe. I call myself CBZ. CBZ is a bank in Zimbabwe. So the reason why I call myself CBZ is because I'm Canadian, British, and Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... I grew up in Zimbabwe, um, my mother died, she committed suicide, she suffered from severe depression, but back home, depression was not a subject that nobody spoke about. They were taught that if you're a woman, you gotta be strong, you gotta be strong for your kids. If your husband cheats on you, it's fine, just be strong, bottle it in. And my mother could not take it, she suffered in silence. Um, you know, um, back home we have two places, right? You have a, a house in the city and a rural home. So I go into the rural home with my grandmother. The next thing is there was a message that your mom died when I was 10 years old. Uh, I didn't realize there was anything called depression. I suffered from depression since I was 10 years old. And I used to hate my mother. I used to tell my sister, like, um, why do we have to celebrate Mother's Day? My mother was not, she didn't love us. Because if she loved us, she would have killed herself. So, fast forward in time, God blessed me. I went to England at a young age. I lived in England. And as I was in England, that's when I realized I started hearing about depression and depression and depression. I'm like, yeah, I am depressed. Mm -hmm. The reason why I was depressed was I was hurting. I had a scar. It was a unforgiveness. Because... I did not forgive my mother for what she did. So because of that unforgiveness, it planted the seed of depression in my life. So the reason why I'm sharing this story with you is um, as Africans, we have cultures. And these cultures, sometimes we have to revisit culture and say, you know what, let's just change this a little bit. If you're in a marriage and you're married and your husband beats you, you go back to your parents or you go to your aunties, they talk, they don't nip it in the bud. They just say, oh, he's gonna change, keep praying and praying, and he doesn't change. So a lot of women then end up suffering silently. They don't know who to talk to, they don't know where to go, they don't, and 
in those days there were no resources like nowadays there's a lot of NGOs in Africa that you can go and it's become everybody's beginning to talk about it so whilst I'm in England um, I was very passionate about empowering myself I started going to school I started doing stuff to improve my situation and I forgave my mother the moment that I forgave my mother God bless me I went for a job interview I didn't have any experience in being an airport supervisor I walked in an interview I said God I want this job and I'm going for it um, I go for my interview and there were people with experience I go and they said have you ever supervised planes I said no but I'd gone to school for a course in aviation everybody who was in the room they had experience they done the job they didn't get the job I got the job God gave me the job because I was healing and I forgave some of the situations that we come in our lives and even some of the depressions that we come in our lives sometimes we have to heal to move forward because when we don't heal when we are holding on to the unforgiveness of what your mother, your dad, your aunt, your uncle did, it continues to build and it's steaming inside. And when you're steaming inside, your heart is constantly racing. Your heart is not at peace. And your brain is, in over, is working overtime all the time. So that's when you start feeling, oh, I'm tired. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Because you are not looking into the situation. You are not getting yourself out of the situation. And when you come to these countries, um, it's hard. Like, I had a job as a supervisor in England. I came to Canada because I was getting married. I get to Canada, guess what? I can't get a job in aviation because I don't have Canadian experience. What am I supposed to do? I applied for every single job on the market. Oh, your resume is so great, but nobody's giving me a job. What do you do? You go back, you kind of go back in the, into the depression. So I use my experiences like, you know what? This is what's going on. This is Canada. I don't have the Canadian experience. So I started a business. I was selling um, stuff from Kenya. I had handbags that were being made in Kenya, being shipped to Canada, and I started selling. I started empowering myself. I started investing in my self-development. I started networking. I started doing things to get myself out of the situation. Particularly, um, in all of the presentations that was um, produced here, I would like to know um, as African descent and a scholar, I noticed why uh, the, uh, that there was not any reference. We talked about Benin here and uh, African um, uh, kingdoms here, but there was no reference mm -hmm. whatsoever regarding any African references in regard of medical system, in regard of uh, mental health, in regard of any other things that was uh, expressed here. So I would like to know why this is, why that reason. Good point. So I will come back to that question. It's very yeah, it's, important. It's very important. Because yeah. we're but talking about adult women yes, here in Africa. Yes. Right? Very important. But let's wait for just some few more. Yeah, presentation. <laughs> so any other question? More of a comment than a question. So... Uh, with regard to postpartum depression or mental health challenges for the most part, um, for us women of African descent, there's often cases, it, it's often cases more social than it is biological, I find. And the reason being we are away from home. If you're a new mom, there's a reality that you don't have the community to raise your children. As dark melanated people, we don't take in the sun during winter as lighter skinned people. We are removed from our culture, our comfort. I think it's important that uh, we contextualize that so that we're not, uh, again, 
feeding into the whole discourse around um, being unwell in terms of you not having done your best. Uh, realities around uh, postpartum depression for black women are very much related to the social realities. So it's important that when you feel down, you feel like harming yourself, you feel unsafe, you feel like your thoughts are not very clear, you're having difficulty sleeping, concentrating, you find yourself uh, cocooning more and more, that you reach out, right? So do the opposite to that. It's very important to make sure that you have a safety plan. So sometimes it's difficult for us black folks to call the police because of the relationships we have historically. Talk to a sister, talk to a neighbor, do not be alone. It's very easy to harm yourself when you feel you're between two walls. Because ideally we're not designed to go towards threat, but if things feel hopeless and helpless, it becomes an option. So kindly, kindly, when those thoughts come in, let's not be hard on ourselves, internalize the stigma as the two presenters talked about. Let's, let's be kind with ourselves and realizing that there are also deeper issues that are out of our control that make it easier for us to become uh, more prone to than other communities. I just want to echo what you have just said, everything you have just said. You were right, correct, thank you for sharing that. And I think initially I said if I were to do this presentation, it would have been a, a half day or a full day. Mm -hmm. So I gave an overall uh, high level mental health and stigmatization um, awareness. So I did not go deep into that. So you were correct. The importance of social support, you cannot emphasize that enough. Friends, family, when you see somebody, Sleeping too much or doesn't sleep, eating too much or doesn't sleep, crying on and off, especially newborn uh, uh, mom, new mothers, you know, uh, this, I think my colleague talks about baby blues, it's normal for about 90 something of women, but it can easily change from baby blues that is normal to postpartum depression, so we need to keep an eye, but we need time. You know, to talk about this, and there are resources, mm -hmm. people that you can call, you know, confidential 24 hours. I have some on the slide I did not share. Please let me know if you want me to share so we can add more to what Dorothy has shared. Mm -hmm. But you are absolutely correct. We need more time to do justice to these topics. Mm -hmm. I'd like to quickly say something on that. It's, um, I just, uh, my baby is t just turned 10 months old. Thank you very much for the presentation. But until I experienced hope pattern, I didn't understand what it means because it does not exist in our African indigenous context. The question our brother asks is very valid. So when we come and we're using these terms and we speak and I think we don't know what it is because we don't know the context in which to evaluate it. When we give birth in our homes, we don't do nothing. They just give us a baby to breastfeed. We have the one that's massaging us. We have the one that's giving us bath. We have the soups that we are taking. We don't even know what depression really is. So it, it, I'm encouraging us that when we teach teaching to ourselves, we, should, we are not just a black people. We are a people with a culture, with a history, with a heritage, and it means that there's a way we do things. Mm -hmm. Now, just like a fish in a river, you take that fish in a river, put it in the sea. You can say water is water, but the fish will, will, will end up batting like a chicken without head and dying. So, for example, when I had a child and I just gave birth, what is postpartum? When before I don't even have time to think because my fellow mates will come and say, "Hey, mama, mama, you hear me? Oh, mama, yes, me. What are you doing? Why are you holding your hand?" Or you go outside, you have the sun, and you see children run around in the compound. You do not have that time to process what it is after birth because by nature, the way to live is how we live. There is that care. There is that support. So I think what I just wanted to just say to that is, if we can do some research into our indigeneity as an African people, within our cultural frame of reference to say, okay, how can I then help us understand this information that's been given? 
Now, I do have a background in psychology and I worked in a psychiatric hospital for a while. So I was able to relate when I had that problem happen to me. I worked here as well in the field of community mental health and social services. So I was able to relate when I had that problem happen to me. But what about those who don't have the privileges of those experiences? So it's my call out to, to, to encourage us to say that for all the information that we get as experts, please let us contextualize it within our indigenous context to say within our culture, what do we know, what do we understand, and how can I pass on this information? Thank you. Your insights about this event. Okay, Madame, it was a very uh, inspirational event. I think more women uh, uh, should organize more of this kind of event to bring the women together, especially people from our country. It's a great event and more groups to organize. Yeah, the, and the, the men and everyone else have to start showing um, their support and assistance towards um, helping women developed to who they truly are and uh, taking the power of the strong um, in our society. So great job on this wonderful event. Um, keep the wonderful work to the organizers. By the way, my name is Ayola. Morris B. Thank you guys for coming and we hope to see you guys in our next event coming up um, in the summer. Okay? Thank you. I love it. I've learned so much about the women of Canada and perspectives that are very important to black women here and I will definitely come for the next program. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Uh, this event is really wonderful and uh, we would like to see more of the connection between the, uh, the community, the women especially, because uh, the women are really the foundation of our society. Uh, we are coming from the matriarch, myself, I'm coming from the matriarch uh, empire. So it's really very, very important that the women are in fire. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming, and we hope to see you in our next event. All right? Thank you. How you feel about today's event? Um, a lot of information. I loved it. It was really, really good. Okay, teach and learn. What I love, I love the event. There's so many perspectives yeah. on okay. the future for women. And all these guys. I've done a lot of things. I've done a lot of things. I pray next time the rest of the women to join us. Whether they are Asian, whether they are Kenyan, whether they are Indian. You guys, you missed it. I took a lot of things. Thank you so much. We have to share. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thanks, we appreciate it. Excellent, I just want to say again congratulations to the organizers by the Campus Together and awesome events for us to come together and learn from one another. I just wish you all the best and I look forward to the next one. Yes, thank you. Absolutely, nice one. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Oh my god, this was an event not to be missed. We are growing, we feel empowered, we are healthier, we have healthy minds, and 2020 is our year. Thank you, Sister Lucy. I wouldn't say too much of women, myself and McMahon, we were actually pondering about um, things going on within us. But we're using this medium to say we have amazing women. Women that are trailblazers, that are actually doing things around the globe.